All right, so um, we're diving into SQL today. Okay. And it looks like you've uh, you've been getting a handle on the basics, you know, databases, SQL commands, that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, seems like you've been putting in the work. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I was thinking for this deep dive, we could try to like solidify those core concepts, yeah. you know, and then we could maybe even uncover a few things that uh, even the seasoned SQL users might find surprising. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I think so. Um, so, okay, let's just start with the basics, right? Mm -hmm. Databases, like when you hear that word, what comes to mind? The first thing I think of is organization, right? Like it's a place to keep all your data, but it has to be organized. Yeah, like a library or something. Exactly. But even a library needs a, a, a librarian, you know, in database world, that's where the DBMS comes in, right? That's right. The database management system. It's exactly. It's like, uh, it's the intermediary between the user and the database. So it's like the, uh, the control panel for our data. That's one way to put mm -hmm. it. Okay, cool. So the materials you sent focused mainly on relational databases. Why are those so popular? Well, you know, they're really good for structured data. Okay. Like uh, like that example with the student data you had. Right, right. Whole number, name, class, that sort of thing. Like a spreadsheet. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So each, um, each row is a student and each column is an attribute. Okay. So relational databases organize the data into tables. Okay, got it. With clear relationships between them. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, you also touched on non-relational databases. Um, yes. Sometimes called NoSQL, I think. Right, right. How do those differ? So those are designed for um, data that doesn't really fit into that neat row and column structure. Okay. Um, one way to think of it is like, uh, like a key value pair structure, kind of like that JSON example you said, where you have a key and it has an associated value. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So relational databases are the uh, the specialists for structured data. Yes. And then NoSQL is more flexible. Yep. Okay. So SQL is the language we use to actually talk to these databases. Exactly. SQL or structured query language is how we talk to the DBMS. So we're not just browsing the library. We're asking specific questions. Exactly. And SQL has a whole set of commands to do just that. Mm -hmm. Let's start with create table. What does that do? So create table that defines the structure of your table. Okay. The columns, their data types. Okay. You know, think about the example of the users table we had. Right. With first name, last name, email ID, and password. Like setting up uh, the shelves in our library. Yes, exactly. No, no, no. Yeah. And then once you have your table um, set up, you'll need to populate it with data. Okay. So that's where insert into comes in? Precisely. <laughs> so that's like adding books to our shelves. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. You tell it the table name, the columns, and the values you want to put in the columns. Okay. And each row represents um, a complete set of information that's also called a tuple. Okay. Tuples. Yes. Okay. And those columns, those are called attributes. Okay, so rows are tuples and columns are attributes. Yes. Got it. But what really gets me excited is select. It seems like that's uh, the real workhorse of SQL. It is. Select is how you retrieve data from the table. Okay. You can pick certain columns like uh, like you did with first name from the USER table. Right. Or you can use the asterisk to grab everything. So we're not just grabbing random books. We're like looking for specific titles. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're in control of what data you want to get. This is really cool, but what's actually happening behind the scenes when we uh, execute in SQL query, the materials mentioned a diagram. Oh, yeah. That diagram shows the two-step process that happens when a query is submitted. Okay. First, the query language processor will... Uh, parse and optimize the query. Hold on. It optimizes it, so it's not just fetching it directly. Right. It checks to make sure the query is correct and figures yeah. out the most efficient way to execute it. Wow. Okay. And then it passes the query to the DBMS engine. And that engine interacts with the physical database where the data is actually stored Okay. using the file manager and the transaction manager. So the file manager is like uh, the actual bookshelves and the transaction manager is like the librarian making sure everything runs smoothly. Yeah, I like that. Okay. The file manager handles the uh, the reading and writing of the data to the storage system. Okay. And then the transaction manager and makes sure that all the operations are reliable, even if there is like a hiccup along the way. So everything stays nice and organized. Exactly. All right. So that's how our query gets processed and we get our results. Yes. That's awesome. So we've covered create table, insert into, and select mm -hmm. The basics of creating tables, adding data, and retrieving information. Mm -hmm. But what about like refining our searches? I'm thinking of things like where and join. 
Yeah, those are very important. Okay. Where is your filtering tool? Okay. It selects records based on specific conditions. Like, uh, let's say you want to find all users over 20. Okay, so it's like adding filters to our library search. Exactly. All right, and what about join? Join seems a little bit more complicated. So join lets you combine information from different tables um, based on some shared field. Oh. Like if you have a table with addresses, mm -hmm. you can use join to link each user to their address. So we're merging two different catalogs in our library. Yeah, you can think of it like that. Okay, so where is for filtering and join is for connecting. Yes. Are there any other commands we can use to uh, refine our searches. Yeah, there's also group by and order by. Okay. Group uh, Groups records based on criteria, so like grouping users by city, and then order by lets you sort them like alphabetically. Okay, so group by is like organizing our results and order by is sorting them. Yes. Exactly. Awesome, so many tools. Yeah, there's a lot. Okay, so before we get to the more advanced stuff, the yeah. materials mentioned SQL constraints. What are those all about? So constraints are the rules and restrictions that are on the data in a table. It ensures data integrity, that the data is accurate and reliable. So they're like the library security system. I like that analogy, yeah. Okay, cool. So the materials had a diagram outlining all these different types of constraints. Mm -hmm. Could you walk me through those? Yeah, so first you have not into all, which makes sure a column always has a value. Okay, no empty shells. Exactly. Got it. And then you have unique which prevents duplicates. Okay. So like each book in the library has a unique ISBN. No duplicate entries, got it. Right. What about primary key? That one seemed important. It is. It uniquely identifies each row in the table. Okay. It's like a social security number for your data. Right. So each book gets its own unique catalog number. Exactly. Okay. And I'm guessing foreign key is related to primary key somehow. Yes, it is. Oh. The foreign key creates a link between two tables by referencing the primary key of another table. So the primary key is like the unique catalog number. Mm -hmm. The foreign key is like a cross-reference in a different catalog. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so that's how you connect information across different tables. So we've talked about not null, unique, primary key, and foreign key. Right. What about check, default, and create index? So check constraints let you enforce certain conditions on the data, okay. like making sure the user's age is always greater than zero. Okay. And then you have default constraints, which assign a default value if no value is given, uh, like a pre-filled form. So that just makes things easier. Right. Okay, what about create index? That creates an index on a column to make searches faster, like an index at the back of a book. Oh, so it's like adding a search engine to our library. Exactly, yes. Got it. Okay, so these constraints are like um, a whole security system to keep our data clean and accurate. They're essential, yeah. This is really helpful, and I'm starting to feel uh, more confident about working with SQL. Good. But we've only really talked about the basics so far. Yeah. What about those advanced operations you mentioned earlier? So... To level up your SQL game, we have things like alter and update. Okay. Alter lets you modify the structure of a table, yeah. like uh, adding or removing columns, so it's like renovating our library. Okay. And then you have update, which modifies the data inside the table, right. like changing the information in the books. Okay, and what about delete? Is it as straightforward as it sounds? It is. It removes records from a table, but you have to be careful because it's permanent. Oh, delete sounds dangerous. Yeah, you have to double check your where clause to make sure you're deleting the right thing. So once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, okay, so de do. definitely use with caution. Yes. So we've got commands for creating, manipulating, and deleting data. Right. What else can we do with SQL? Any other, like, hidden tricks up our sleeve? Well, remember those wild cards and operators we talked about? Yeah. Those are very helpful, like the like operator. It's great for finding patterns. Okay. Like uh, all the users with first names that start with A. So it's like a wild card search. Exactly. And it uses those wild cards, like the percent sign or the underscore. Okay. The percent sign means zero, one, or many characters. And the underscore means a single character. So I could use like to find all the users that have an E in their last name. Precisely. Cool. And then there's also the IN operator, okay. which lets you choose from a list of values. Okay. Like if you want to select all users who live in London or Paris. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. And another good one is the between operator, which is great for filtering by range. Okay. Like uh, like ages between 20 and 30. It's setting age limits for our library patrons. Yes, exactly. It seems like SQL has an operator for like every situation. It's very versatile. 
It really is. So we've only scratched the surface here. Yeah. Um, maybe we should take a break and come back to talk about some of the more advanced sequel concepts. That sounds good. Okay, so we're back. Yeah, we covered a lot in that last section. We did. It's amazing how much you can do with SQL. It really is. It's like, uh, I don't know, it feels like this secret language to talk to data. Yeah. It's pretty cool that we can create tables, add data, get information, filter it, like all these things. Yeah, and what's interesting about SQL is it's, uh, it's a declarative language. Okay. You tell the database what you want, not how to get it. So instead of like micromanaging every step, we're just giving instructions. Right. Okay. You're like the architect, you know, not the construction worker. I like that. And you focus on the what, not the how. <laughs> All right. So those tools we talked about, constraints and wildcards and operators, those give us a lot of control. They do. It's like having our own uh, custom toolkit Yeah. for our data library. Exactly. Okay. We've touched on some more advanced stuff too, like joins, which lets us combine information mm -hmm. and transactions, which keep everything running smoothly. Yeah. All very important. Those diagrams from the materials were really helpful for uh, visualizing how joins work. Visuals are great. Yeah, I'm a visual learner for sure. Yeah, they help make it more concrete. I agree, but I have to admit, thinking about all the things you can do with SQL, mm -hmm. it can be a little overwhelming. I understand. Like, where do we even go from here? Well, the good news is SQL is a a really well-established language. Yep. There's tons of resources to help you learn. Oh, that's good. Online tutorials, courses, you know. Like a map and compass. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. But for someone just starting out, what would you recommend? Practice, practice, practice. Okay. Just keep working with it, you know. Start with simple queries and then work your way up. You just dive in and get my hands dirty. Exactly. Don't be afraid to mess up. Right, everyone makes mistakes. That's how you learn, right? Yeah, it's like learning any other language. The more you use it, the better you get. And there's a whole community of SQL users out there. Yes, a big community. Okay, cool. So, um, looking beyond the basics, what are some of the uh, the more interesting things about SQL that we haven't talked about yet? Well, you know, we've talked about manipulating data, but SQL can also analyze and report on data. All like right. uh, aggregate functions can summarize data and give you insights. Aggregate functions. Can you give me an example? Sure. Like, let's say you want to find the average age of all your users. Okay. You can use the AVG function. Okay. Or if you want to count how many orders each customer has placed, you can use the count function. So it's like instead of going through each record manually, it does all the calculations for us. Yes, exactly. That's awesome. It's really good for uh, large data sets. Okay, so aggregate functions, that opens up a lot of possibilities. Yeah. What other advanced concepts should I look into? Well, they're subqueries. Subqueries. Yeah, they let you embed a query inside another query. Okay. Like, say you want to find all customers who spent over a certain amount. Yeah. You can use a subquery to first find those orders and then use that to find the customers. So it's a two-step process. Right. Okay, cool. So that's to create some pretty complex logic. All right, subqueries. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, it's worth learning. And what about window functions? I've heard about those, but I don't really know what they do. So window functions, they're kind of like advanced aggregate functions. Oh. They let you calculate across a set of rows. Okay. It's a bit hard to explain without an example, but they're great for analyzing trends. All right, window functions, another thing to add to my list. Yeah. It's crazy how much you can do with SQL. There's always more to learn. It really is. And as you learn more SQL, you start to get into things like stored procedures, triggers, and views. Yeah, those are all really useful. Okay, so what do those do? So stored procedures, they're like uh, predefined SQL scripts okay. that you can execute when you need them. Okay. And then triggers, those are like uh, automatic responses okay. to events in the database, like uh, like if you want to update a customer's loyalty points every time they order something. So stored procedures are like custom functions yeah. and triggers are like setting up automatic action. Okay, and what about views? Views, they're like virtual tables. They give you a different perspective on your data, okay. like custom dashboards. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow, there's so much you can do. SQL is very powerful. It really is. It's like, it's not just a language. It's like a whole world yeah. of data manipulation, analysis, automation, all these things. And it's always evolving too. Yeah, I guess I have to keep up with all the data we're creating. Right. It's like SQL is on its own learning journey. I like that. So as we're getting to the end of this part of our deep dive, mm -hmm. is there um, anything else you wanted to mention about this vast world of SQL? It really is amazing you know, to see how SQL's evolved from just managing data to like 
all this analysis, automation, even innovation. Yeah. But before we finish up our deep dive, is there anything else like a final thought you want to leave the listener with as they continue their SQL journey? Hmm. Well, I guess what I find most fascinating about SQL is how it's at its heart a language about relationships. Relationships, how so? You know, it's all about understanding how these different pieces of information connect, how they interact. So it's not just about getting the data. It's like understanding the bigger picture. Exactly. And as you get better with SQL, you'll start to see that this idea of relationships, it goes beyond just the database. Okay. It's about the relationships between data, systems, even people. Wow, that's pretty deep. It is. It's like SQL is this lens for seeing how everything is connected. I like that. So as you keep learning SQL, I want you to think about those connections, look for patterns, see how things are related. It's like SQL isn't just for managing information, it's for actually discovering new things. Exactly. All right, well, we're about out of time for this deep dive, but I want to thank you for taking us on this incredible journey through the world of SQL. You're welcome. We started with the basics, you know, creating tables, adding data, all that. Mm -hmm. And then we went into some pretty cool stuff like joins and transactions. Yeah, it was a lot. And we even got a taste of those powerful aggregate functions, yeah. subqueries, and window functions. Lots of tools. It really is. So to our listener, we encourage you to keep learning, keep experimenting, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible with SQL. Have fun with it. You never know what amazing things you might discover along the way. Exactly. All right. That's it for our deep dive into SQL. See ya. Dev